you're, you're fun to work with. So, you know, it made it watching you bring these characters. What's really interesting is, is I have to plug you too, because, um, you made this book live. I mean, no, it already it lived before. Good. It was in the writing. It's always in the I writing. Know, but still, you got you got to take some credit too on the audiobook because you have such a variety of voices. But what makes them really, really good is your heart. You can relate to all of these different characters. You know, as you were uh, narrating this book. It, it was like you became them. All the light warriors immediately stepped forward, silent and sure. I guess you don't have to ask. They are as dedicated to her as I am, said Rom. Rutu turned. How much do you think Zreus is a player in this game of balanced tool, Yata? She looked up from her scales and smiled uncharacteristically. I've already been going over that. I would surpass important and say quite critical, though much is fuzzy and not written yet because of choices he has not made yet. He writes his own destiny, not us. Wake him up. If you were willing to take the risk of him going on a rampage, sure, Rutu said nervously. I'll hold him and wake him. He knows me, and I'll take the risk. It's Kia, great to see you. Hey, <laughs> I've been looking forward to this. It's going to be fun. We're going to have a chat and we're going to talk about an amazing audio book. It's an amazing book. Um, if it don't make it on the page, it ain't going to cut it on the stage. So it's an amazing book. So it's made a great audio book as well, I think. I, I really enjoyed doing it. Can we start with your name? Now, Ish Kia, I've never met an Ish Kia before. And it's, it's such a cool name. It sounds like it could be one of your characters in the book. Yeah, I actually came up with Ishkia in the 90s, and it's made up of seven parts of the Sanskrit language. And oh, wait a second. Back up a second. Back up a second. <laughs> so you didn't used to be Ishkia. It's a name you chose for yourself. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's made Why? Up of seven parts of the Sanskrit language, and it's a message to myself right. to always remind me of who I want to be. Oh, so, that's cool. So yeah. who were you before? Well, nobody even called me by my first name. My first name is Leslie. Right. My family never even called me that. I don't even look like a Leslie. Right. <laughs> Paige is actually my middle name. Right. And that's... I figured, you know, Ishkia Page, people could call me either one. Okay. So. Well, we got something in common because, I mean, have you legally changed your name? No, it's in the process, though. Oh, I see. Because I legally changed mine um, because I was a, an air conditioning engineer in Sydney, Australia. And I came home from work one day and I said to my wife, I said, I've had the radio on in the van today. That's what I want to do. I was 27. And then when I got my first radio gig in the, the outback of Australia, in a little town called Parks, when I was on the, I did the afternoon drive show in Parks in New South Wales, I always called myself Graham Mack on the air, but my name was Graham Mackatea, and I thought Mackatea was too clunky for people on the radio, especially when I had the wrong accent, because I didn't sound Australian. Um, <laughs> I, I changed it, so we... Uh, so Julie's actually had three names now because she was Julie Halford and then she was Julie McAteer and now she's Julie Mac. So, yeah, we've got something in common there, name changing. And, and we yeah. made up the name Mac. It was just a simpler version. Um, having said that, though, one of my favorite broadcasters is a guy in Chicago and his name is Jonathan Brandmeyer. And you think you'd just change that to Johnny B or something, but he didn't. He's Jonathan Brandmeyer. And... Uh, <laughs> Who 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 know? So wh when you say that the Sanskrit name, it tells you what you want to be. What does it tell you you want to be? Ah, good question. Basically, anything that I choose to be, but it's all associated with the the core um, aspect of 
being love and living love, putting it in being it in motion. So basically what that means is, is if, if love isn't in motion, it doesn't exist. And I've said that's something that I've said since the 80s. And uh, so that's kind of what it reminds me of. And of, it reminds me of who I want to be. And I just want to be that love in motion with, it, with whatever I want to do. Well, I can tell you that that really came across because for anybody watching this, this is the first time you and I have actually, I think, even had a conversation, never mind seen each other. Yes. Because all of our communication as we were doing Fractured was through, well, mostly through WhatsApp, wasn't it? And, and you yes. did leave some, some quite lengthy uh, voicemails on WhatsApp, which we'll get to in a bit. But there was, there was definitely a love and a respect that came through just in those messages because Aww. no there were things like you know <laughs> you know at certain points i think we did it every two hours didn't we of finished yes. hours in the book you would check it and then let me know if there are any changes and i may have pronounced a word wrong which is easy to do when some of the words oh, you yeah. made up they're not even you know <laughs> so so you know names of characters and stuff so i would maybe pronounce a name wrong and instead of you saying, no, you got that wrong, you'd go, sounded to me like you said. So you would soften it. You know, do you know what I'm saying? Well, I could have heard it wrong, yeah. I mean, you know, I just I'll, you know, keep it open because, you know, people are human and yeah. we yeah. hear things differently and, I don't know, just seemed more... Objective. No, it was it was nice. It was lovely, and and some of your voice messages I played to Julie. I said, "This lady's really, this lady's crazy, but really nice." Was oh, I think great. what I said? Is that is that okay? Is that a fair thing to say about you? That is very fair. I am <laughs> okay. just no filters and all open. Okay, yeah. now I'm picking up. Now, obviously, I'm in England, so. I'm not an expert on this. I'm picking up a slight southern twang. Is that correct? Yes, it's watered down. I grew up in the southeast U.S. Whereabouts? Um, I was born in Virginia and six months later moved to South Carolina. Uh -huh. And lived there on James Island for a few years. And if you'll notice in the book, it actually uses James Island in the book. Okay. Okay. And... Um, which is right off the coast of Ch where Charleston is. And then uh, when I was in, I think it was 10th grade, I moved to North Carolina and fin and grew up the rest of the way there. Right. So in Whereabouts in North Carolina? Was that in, in Charleston? Gary, Gary in, and Raleigh area. Because I had some friends, I think I might have mentioned it to you, I had some friends who did a breakfast show in Raleigh. Their name were Jean and Julie. They're a married couple. They... Uh... But as radio tends to, they, they fire all the best people. <laughs> and Gene and Julie were just one of the. Well, that, like I say, my favorite guy, Jonathan Brandmeier, he's not actually. He, he got fired a couple of years ago and hasn't got back into the game. It was just something about radio. It's a, it's a crazy thing. Well, if you have any business. kind of ethics these days, especially in any kind of media, it seems like you're, you're thrown out pretty quick. That's. that's an interesting thing to say and when i think about the times when i got into trouble with either radio stations or with uh, the regulator of broadcasting in this country which is called ofcom if ever i had an issue it was only when i told the truth i could make something up and say it on the air i mean many many years ago first uk radio station i worked for the Queen Mother was very much alive, and I announced on the air she died. Not, not a ripple, nothing. Yet, a few weeks later, I had a go at some kids at a school who'd been obnoxious at an event, and all hell broke loose. And I said, but I was telling the truth about those kids. But because it was true, you only get into trouble for telling the truth. You can make up whatever you like, and it's fine. But... Yeah, the truth, people don't like the You can't handle the truth, to quote a famous movie. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So where, where do you live now, Ishkia? Right now I live in California. 
Really? Whereabouts? Uh, north of Sa Sacramento. Okay, so Sacramento is the capital of California. And yes. it's inland from... Is it? Let, let me yeah. think. Is it about halfway between LA and San Francisco, but it's inland? No, it's actually north east of san francisco northeast of san francisco okay yeah. all right so it's not too hot up there there'd be nice nice temperature up there would it Ooh, i don't know it's in, <laughs> in the summers it gets 110 to 120 degrees oh really that's because it's inland yeah. i suppose it, it's in the bowl it's in like this bowl so right is it anywhere uh, near fresno it's not too too far but it's about an hour and a half maybe two i've hours. been to fresno i've been to I've been to San Francisco. I've been to Los Angeles a lot. In fact, I've driven between the two along the coast road through Big Sur National Park. Um, but that That's part of California, kind of north of San Francisco, I really don't know that well at all. Yeah, there's there's not as much going on here other than the capital. Right. You know, it's, it's a lot more remote. It's not as largely built. Of course, Sacramento is pretty, pretty big and it's kind of like an armpit. It's so. like an armpit. <laughs> yeah, it's not very pretty. <laughs> what? It's hairy and it stinks. What? It's like, <laughs> I told you I have no filters. <laughs> so, so what? What's the name of the place you're in again? The actual town that I live in is called North Highlands. Right. Oh, North Highlands. And what's the population roughly there? I have no idea. Okay, but is it a big place? It's it's kind of it, it's in Sacramento County. Yeah, but it's not incorporated into Sacramento. Right. Okay. So and, it, and how did you end up there from South Carolina? <laughs> Work and people, and I needed a change, so I went. It's probably the worst move I ever made, but you know what? You make. You make the best of what you choose to do, you know? I'm looking forward to leaving California. It's a great place to visit. It's fun to visit if you go to the right places, but it's not a great place to live. <laughs> not Why for a Southern that? girl. It's still a whole different culture. Everybody's, uh, it's like a melting pot, which I don't mind. I'm not racist at all, uh, at all. But it's the cultures are so divided that if you're not in a particular culture, it takes a long time to even make friends, you know, right. it's kind of weird. It's very, very segregated. Uh, sort of like how Miami is really Miami's like that. Um, it's very segregated and well, along ethnic lines. Yes. I mean, a lot of, it's kind of funny because people are used to the melting pot, but yet at the same time, the cultures, it, it the cultures separate people not the skin right does that make sense i mean yeah. because each culture has is so defined that um even though skins are becoming more and more like you know because of of marriages and you know having children and all that kind of stuff but the culture the culture in each area and and stuff is just so they're hard lined. It's very yeah. difficult to make, make friends. And you say work took you there. Before you were a best selling author, what was it you did? I um, was <laughs> a, I was a consult. I worked for a company called Synergist Technologies, and they were in the engineering industry. And uh, I, I I got into that kind of work um, because I was a manager for to kind of rework an entire engineering department in Ohio. And I did such good work there for that kind of thing, using this company software that they actually hired me. And so I was their top level troubleshooter and implementer for that company for almost like a decade. So having then, that kind of techie background, has that helped with the books? Because the book fractured i mean it, it it's a sci-fi book and right. and it's a great story and it deals with all the human things 
you know, that make stories great. However, there is a lot of physics in the thing, you know, and, and it does, is that where that comes from? You know, there's a piece of it that does. What I actually worked with more was computer networks and, and working with people and joining people together. So that kind of aspect did. Plus, I was I worked a lot with Government Research Center implementing in there, and I got to see a whole science aspect that I never dreamed. It was kind of weird, though. You walk on these... Can, you know, campuses of these research centers, and it's like walking, they're so smart. They're so smart. That it's like walking down the street with robots. <laughs> hey, how are you? He's a Southern girl, you know? Hey, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. You know, and they're like, fine. And then they just walk on. It's like a robot. It is just kind of weird. But it, it got me interested in science fiction of the body coupled with my background working in a wellness center. Um, so I got really interested in the science fiction, quantum science and uh, of the body. And so there's a lot of that in there. And most people don't realize that there is a lot of science in that. So I don't know. Kind well, of, you've got um, characters which are actually made of light in this book. Yes, the Viduri. Yeah, that that's that's pretty heavy stuff. I don't even. I, I, maybe they did, but I just I don't think Star Trek even went that far. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they didn't have a, a a race of people who were light. Yeah, I was really afraid to do that, honestly, because... Oh, it works you know, really well. And with the Light Warriors, and you'd have to... I don't want to give too much away about the book, but it does work really well. So uh, there was no need to be afraid. You pulled it off. Yeah, it, was, it just didn't, you know, because you, you, you mentioned all oh, light people, you know, and it's, it seems so unrealistic. You know, it seems more fantasy. Yeah, but um, the way you've written them, you write them as real people. The fact that they are they are made of light is just one of the things about them but you write them as real people yeah yeah that was yeah. it was fun it was actually fun to bring personality and use the science in in their bodies to create these characters so what were you reading as a kid <laughs> i didn't read Really? I, I had such, I wanted to, but I had such a learning disability uh, and dyslexia, severe dyslexia. My father had it that I couldn't read very fast. I would read a sentence and it would take, I would read it three times and I would never understand what I read. I really had a hard time in school. In fact, I was labeled as retarded. Why would they do that to a kid? It was different times then. You know, you know because different. they didn't have any idea of what reading disabilities really were then, you know. But it just, you know, when you when you meet a kid, you've no idea what that kid's contribution to the world is going to be. And, you know, it might be something that isn't even related to what they're not good at. But why? who decided that these certain things are what you have to be good at to get on in life? Because time and time again, really successful people prove that wrong. So why is it yeah. still there? People are human. They like to judge. They like to, you know, they forget that you have your own filters. And they not, may not necessarily be all the perspectives. So people forget that. You know, I just don't think they're very aware of that yet. And that's one of the reasons why I wrote the book yeah. is to bring yeah. concepts like that in without having to think you're being schooled or, you know, and just have fun. Yeah. If people have yeah. fun learning. I mean, if people will learn faster if they have fun learning. So yes. That's cool. I think, wasn't it Walt Disney? There's a quote. It may, he may never have said it. I think I saw it at Epcot. This is, this is how deep my knowledge is. But I think he said something along the lines of he'd rather entertain people and hope they learn something 
than teach them and hope they're entertained. That's pretty much yeah. where I come from. Yeah. So, so how did you how did you beat that then having this label and also having the reading difficulty to then go out there in the world and be successful, which you were? How did you how did you spear that beast? Well, honestly, for a long time, I didn't think I would because I remember in high school as a senior, now my English teacher told me I would be really, really lucky to even graduate. So don't ever think about going to college. So, well, you know. That's like saying, I'm going to do it. <laughs> oh, I, that's all you needed. That was the push. So I remember studying like 15, 16 hours a day for the last two weeks. You know, I always did. I was a good, I was a good student, but you would never know it. Yeah. And um, I remember standing on the graduation line and she was coming down the line, pulling people off the line that failed their exam. Right ah. there in front of everybody. Times were different then. Yeah. And she walked up to me. I'll never forget it. She had these great, big, huge, you know, square glasses. And and um, her name was Miss Baker. Uh, and she's probably dead and gone by now. But still, I don't mind telling her name because what she did to people was just horrible. But she came up to me. She says, you just passed by one point. So, and then she just went on. I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> and then I went to college and I find after a year and a half because of a lot of different circumstances. And I was told by a professor to, you got to read these six books and, um, and have reports on each one of them in, in four weeks. And what were you studying? At the time I was studying uh, the arts because that's what I had a scholarship for and um, a music scholarship. And, um, but at, at three weeks I was a, I had gotten through half of one book and I, right. and, you, and you only had six every, weeks to do the whole, the whole, how, how long did you have? You had, was it six books in six weeks? Mm -hmm. and six you did, books in four weeks. Sorry, six books in four weeks. And after three weeks, you've done half of one book. Right. So I, you know, college was it, you know, so I went on with life. And then when I worked for the wellness center, I went to go get certified for what they call educational kinesiology. And um, we had to do this stuff on, it's basically brain integration. And we had to do this stuff on each other over the weekends. And this is what broke me through it. There is a reason for this story. But anyway, we were doing this stuff on each other and we found out that every single thing that I did with my brain, except for the very bare minimum, was with the right brain. The left brain kept my heart going and that was pretty much, you know, those basic automatic functions was all I was using. Everything had been routed to my right brain. Wait a second. So, now let me let me just get this. One <laughs> one side is the creative side, and one side is the more analytical side. Which one is which? Which one is Spock? Which one is Kirk? Right brain is creative. Right brain is creative. Left brain is analytical and. And um, you and you were like ninety nine percent creative side, the right side. Yes. So I couldn't even relate to the technical side, which is probably one of the reasons why I couldn't read very well, is because it was that extreme. Yeah. So we yeah. did these what we called balances on this kind of stuff, working with each other, learning how to do this whole system, because I was going to do this in the wellness center with people that were very challenged um, for different reasons, physically and mentally. So I went home that Sunday with fever. I mean, I felt like I had a fever. I don't know if I did or not, but I felt I you know chills, all that kind of stuff. I was like, oh, man, now I'm going to have to call into work and blah, 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 blah. I woke up next day. Fine. So I went to work, pulled charts and was going to see my patients, all this kind of stuff. And I was reading up on their stuff. And I noticed for the first time in my life, literally for the first time in my life, I was reading a sentence, understanding it and not getting sick to my stomach. And what had changed? That whole integration thing that I'd done on my head all that weekend. Oh, all that. so you'd so been... my left brain started integrating and working along with the right brain. And so I was able to read and understand. Wow. So, 
And yeah. what were the what were the kind of things you were working on to bring that together? Well, what what the concept is on the, on the educational kinesiology is is you can pick a goal or assess a problem that you're having and keep it in mind, and then you do physical um, motions that actually connect and make the synaptic um, connections in your brain, the bridges in your brain, to be able to do that better. And oh. um, so it just so happened that we did the the whole, you know, left brain, right brain kind of thing. <clears throat> and she said it was actually an experiment at the time. And I'm glad she did do it because... You know, it really, I'm, I, you know, I'm still a, a slower reader than most people, but, you know, I love to read now. Wow. So, so around about, oh, excuse me, I got a bit of a cough. <coughs> around about what age did this all happen, this life-changing event happen? I was about 32. Right. So the college thing was long gone by then? That didn't work out? <laughs> Yeah. Then I went back to college, got yeah. a, a BS and a master's. So just out of pure, and it, it was so challenging because even though I could read without getting sick and you know, it wasn't the same as being really good at that kind of thing and studying and stuff. So I actually had to learn to really, really study for the first time. So it was really tough. Yeah. And I did it because I was terminally ill, so to speak. So I just kept my brain going and it just kept going. Got another T degree. I kept living. <laughs> terminally okay. ill, terminally ill, so to speak. What do you mean? What? Just this thing was not going to work out oh, for you. Oh man! In the tw in my twenties, I started coming down with weird health issues, just swelling and weight gain and um, passing out and n none of the doctors could figure it out at the time. And this went on for like a long time and I was diagnosed with um, uh, fibromyalgia, peripheral vascular disease, a couple of different types and all kinds of stuff. And my organs were finally, I got to the point where I was over 300 pounds and my, it, or all my organs were starting to fail and they gave me three months to live. Goodness me. And, yeah. And um, so, and there was all kinds of damage by that point in time with a lot of my systems and, and all that kind of jazz. And so I started getting an education, figuring, well, keep my mind going at least until the end. And I kept learning and I kept living and <laughs> started going into the science of food and body and because what happened what really turned me on fire was um they had told me they didn't believe my food logs because i was so large i'm telling you i'm i'm like eating raw foods i <laughs> i don't even have sugar in my diet i'm telling you i'm not you know they didn't believe me and so for insurance to actually cover it my next tests they told me basically I had to go to a fat farm school. Right. So I went and then I, I think the second time I went, they told me to eat canned green beans and I asked them why. And they said, because it has less calories. And I was like, but it has zero nutrition. <laughs> I was like, I think I've learned as much as I can possibly learn. <laughs> And I walked out, never went back, and haven't seen a doctor since. Wow! So, so it seems seems it, to me that you've yeah. you've gone through life proving everybody wrong, <laughs> <laughs> which yeah, is a good way to be, because there's so many victories along the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then I end up getting two degrees, and I was like, "Got it." Take yeah. that, Miss Baker. <laughs> yeah, Miss Baker. Yeah, square-eyed monster. Yeah, we don't well, like Miss Baker. You should oh, what? Oh my god! You should, should do what? Make her one of my. I should make her one of my characters. 
<laughs> well, you know, one of my one of my little secrets is if there's a if there's a character in a book I'm doing uh, who's an unlikable character, I will make it one of my old bosses that screwed me over in radio. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a particular Scotsman that appears every now and again. So if you ever if if in one of the 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 sequels to Fractured, if you ever write a uh, a really dishonest, sneaky, slimy character, and you wonder why I'm doing him as a Scotsman. <laughs> you, you, you'll know why. You know, because I got some great friends hey, who are Scottish. I have one of those coming me. up. Oh, well, you'll hear this guy then. You'll, <laughs> you, you, you'll, you'll hear him. So we're both getting even at the world at the same time. There we go. Yeah, in a fun way. <laughs> So you didn't mention you didn't mention family or partners or anything along the way. Have you had the have you had a good support network? I I do. It's it's not huge. I'm one of those designs in life that do, isn't built for like huge public audiences or something, you know, kind of thing. I'm more of a close um family friend, smaller group kind of thing. But my, most of my family is all across the country, back right. in North Carolina. So, yeah, I mean, they're far away. So, I mean, I get great support, you know, as far, you know, with what you get far away. And then I have, you know, friends here. Yeah. And I actually have friends all over the world that have given me more support than even the U.S. people have. Not that I have anything wrong with U.S. people. It's just that I happen to have friends, Malaysia, Japan. UK, uh, I mean, that I've known and loved for years. So I have a really good support system that roots me on. That's great, because that's the thing with the with the internet these days is connect. I mean, here we are connecting thousands of miles apart and, you know, eight across eight time zones or something. You know, I can remember in the 70s watching TV when they'd hook up something like this, and it was a big deal, and it'd be like, we're about to lose the satellite, and it was like, you know, everything was a time slot. It was so expensive to do. But now it's yeah. just so cool that, that we can all, you know, it's like – with um with audiobooks you know i'm i'm lucky enough to narrate i've narrated audiobooks for people in lots in the united states but all over the uk and canada and ireland uh, one fellow was in china although i think he was based in britain but it is just marvelous isn't it now that we can yeah. we can get together that if you know if you've got something to say in a book and i've got a way to say it and if that matches with what you're trying to say you can connect with me and with where, whereas many many years ago you'd be limited to, you know maybe a, a couple of agencies or something that I don't even know how it used to work, uh, to find audiobook narrators. But it's just marvelous, isn't it, that now you've literally got the choice of the whole world is going to audition for you, and you know I was lucky enough to be chosen for this one, and 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 I appreciate it because I had so much fun doing it, which you probably know, because the characters you've written in Fractures fractured are are wonderful and it's we should say that the full title is the sleeping phoenix book one this is a part of a, of a series of books and the the characters that i get to work with in the in the first book are just marvelous just so deep and everything from from like rom who's like an old sage to to zreus who's just going through this awakening experience you know even even from the beginning of this i mean i don't know where it goes but even from the beginning of this book to the end of the book there's a lovely change in him that this experience he has alters him in the way that we all get altered as we go through life and it's just so so thank you so much for letting me let me into your world like this yeah it's it's fun and 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 it's you're the you're you're fun to work with so, you know, it made it watching you bring these characters. What's really interesting is, is I have to plug you too, because um, you made this book live. I mean, no, it already it lived before. Live. It was in the writing. It's always in the I writing. Know, but still, you got you got to take some credit too on the audio book because you have such a variety of voices but what makes them really really good is your heart 
you can relate to all of these different characters. You know, as you were uh, narrating this book, it, it was like you became them. <laughs> and so it was really wild because at the end of the, the last half of the book, I mean, it was all good, but the last half, you really believed it was Reyes. You really believed it was Rom, and or you really believed that they were really upset, or yeah. really heartbroken, or whatever. You believed it, and um, well, I so get right, I get right into them. I get quite close to them. The, the character, the better written ones, you know, yours is one of the best written as far as the characters go, and then the situations you put them in, and. It's for me. I do, I do, I do feel as if I know them and I care about them and what happens. And so maybe I don't know that that's a fault. I know I worked on one book once and I found myself crying because one of my favorite characters, something bad happened to them and it bothered me. And I had to retake it about four times before I could get it together because I just when 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 characters are written as well as the characters that you write. They do take on something else, and they become. They be. I'm gonna sound like I'm crazy now, but they come like they become like I know them, like, you know, cl You're they're, not cl crazy they're very to close. Say that. Yeah, it's but it's because you've written them so well. Ah, yeah. thank you. No, it really is. They are. They are written. They are written so well. It, it's just a, just a joy to do. Now, did I hear your doorbell just then? Yeah, I did. Do you want yeah, to go get did. it? No, it's a del it's just a delivery. Just a delivery. We're so close to Christmas. This could be an important delivery. <laughs> no, I'm fine. <laughs> uh, no, I'm fine. No, it's yeah. just um, you did such a great job. And you know what? I hope one day that you narrate, you have to do four takes on something for me. <laughs> I'm sure it'll happen. I'm sure it will happen. I'm sure it will happen. Yeah. yeah. It's, one it, it, time I heard you laugh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I, they. If, it, if was they funny, it was perfect timing, though. It was just <laughs> perfect timing. You just let yourself chuckle right yeah. as you were saying something, and it was just perfect. It was like yes. Oh, and I, oh, I laughed as the character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was it? Uh, was it Gulu? Was it? Mm, I don't think so it no was okay okay yeah it was later yeah. in the book i can't remember who it was but it was perfect oh so they were just all they were all so much fun and Tulyata is fun to do and the villains are always good so the dark one although he's not been in it much i always i always really enjoy the villains but uh, at the at the moment the way that the story is unfolding from book one from fractured the first one uh Zreus is my favorite character because of that journey he went on or he's been on so far um he's yeah and so, yeah and, and i could see how you know on the face of it he should be unlikable with him being such a warrior and everything but there's something deep down there that that there's a there's a there's almost an innocence to him that i find very appealing that he wants to do the right thing, you know, deep down. And I, I like, I think that's a really good character who has a hard shell, but um, you can pierce that shell. And once you get inside, there's, there's something lovely in there. And, and he starts using that. And uh, that was really, really cleverly written. I really enjoyed doing Zreus. It's a very that's good character. That's great feedback too. Yeah. That's great feedback. Thank you. It's where do you so get hard. your where do you get your ideas for your characters? Well, see here's here's the thing. When I didn't want to write a book and um didn't want to write people kept telling me you got to write a book about your life. You got to write a book about your life, you know. I think you I'm do. Like, I think you definitely do. No, I don't have to agree. <laughs> do. <laughs> I don't want to have to relive that. And, you know, it would put me back in places that, you know, I've processed through, but why push fate? You know, 
that kind of thing. So that's what I always felt like. So basically I was running from something. I was running from something I didn't realize. So one time I was talking to one of my best friends in the UK and um, she was saying, Ish, you've got to write this book. And something in there kind of went through me then. There was a knowing in that feel. Sometimes, you know, you get every, every if you ever had a the experience where somebody says something and, and it just seems so profound, but, you know, it just, you knew you had to do something. Mm-hmm. Well, it was like that for me. So I thought, okay, but I'm, I'm going to have to compromise on this. I am not doing some kind of memoir or <laughs> autobiography and self-important crap. You know, I just, I just, <laughs> my. so... So I came up with the idea of fiction and integrating parts of of my life in there. And Aya is living my life. Is she? Is she? Is, it's adapted to fiction, but yes, she is, you know, the firehouse and all of those things and all of those events actually happened, except they're adapted to fiction. So it's okay. my way of incorporating. That's where a lot of Aya's stuff comes in. Yeah. Um, yeah. But again, you know, it's adapted to fiction. All that stuff that happened in grade school, that was, that really happened. And um, so anyway, that's where that part came from. And the other parts are, every single one of the parts are parts of, of what play in our minds and in our bodies. So the entire novel series takes place inside your body. And they're now, actually- Now that, that hasn't come across yet. Is that, have you, is this a spoiler? Yeah, it is a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> kind of right. not in a way, But not really, you know, it's, it's, if you know anything about human, and it also incorporates the science of human design, which incorporates six different six or seven different sciences uh genes and um it even has astrology in it things like that so all the characters are actually created from experiences that i had and the thoughts in my mind uh and uh now the events that didn't have that happened in the book aren't necessarily events that happen to me, mm-hmm. but I'm just, it's, it's like a struggle in the body and the mind. Cause remember I was very sick for a very long time. So, um, you know, it's, it's all about, and what I learned about the body science. So that's where a lot of the characters came in is aspects of who we are as humans mm-hmm. and, um, and inside, you know, body science, but, mm. You know, I think that you... must be why they come across as so real to me, because although they are aliens or they're light beings, the the, the struggles and the the conflicts, the internal conflicts that they each have to deal with, are very very real, and that must be mm-hmm. why. It's really interesting too, because one of my beta readers is a pathologist. And she's really? really good. Yeah. And she's really good. And she's so enamored, you know, with this whole series. And I know that's why, too, because she is so she's been doing pathology for 30 years, 30 plus years. Yeah. And yeah. she just loves this series. And um, um, like one of the words in there, I'm not going to spoil it, but one of the words in there, I was like, do you re- do you recognize this word? She was like, no. <laughs> Should I? I was like, yeah. <laughs> so she, it was kind of fun, you know. But uh, well, it was yeah, it was I, a it was a pathology word, was it? It was science, body science, yeah, medical, okay. definitely, you know. So, but it was it was pretty. It's not one that I guess that enters their realm, you know, often, but. Mm-hmm. Is it's been, but that's where I get all the characters is what we do to ourselves. Hmm. Hmm. 
Yeah. You know. No, it's, it's really good. Really, really good. It's called Fractured. It's available now. It's a, it's an e-book and it's also it's also now an audio book. And it's and one. It's going to be one of many. While we were working on the audio book, I mentioned earlier how you left me long WhatsApp voice messages, which were always a delight, always a delight. <laughs> and uh, in fact, you you helped me get through uh, a, a couple of months ago when we were doing the book. I wasn't well. I'd got like a tonsillitis thing, and you know that they they kind of cheered me up through that as well because I felt a bit miserable, a bit sorry for myself a little bit there. But um, when you said you left messages like that, you said it was because you have difficulty typing. What's that all about? Rather than send an email, you would rather if it was a long message, you did it as a voice message. Why was that? Because I have a disease called peripheral vascular disease, and um, it causes a lot of pain, uh, just touching fingertips. Uh, so typing is very, very difficult for me, uh, especially over long periods of time. But so, yeah, it's like here I am an author, and I've tried dictating. I can't. I can't create and yammer. You know, right? Yeah. I can't do it. So it's it's really helpful that I do it by voice because my hand you hand have beaten hand. so many obstacles. There have been so many obstacles in front of you, and you've just got gone round them, gone over them, or knocked them down. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's inspiring, yeah. Ishkia. You know that there are so you know there are so many whiners, uh, you know, around who will get to the slightest obstacle. But you've just gone. Nah, we keep going. How are we going to do this? Let's work this out. That's a really yeah. inspiring thing to know. Well, after well, I haven't always been that. You know, it's kind of funny. I've had my struggles. I'm human, just like everybody else. But I finally figured out, wow, you know what? It's actually easier to change and adapt than to fight it. <laughs> yeah. It's actually easier. Yeah. And then I actually got on this research bin about why scientifically it would be easier. And it was just like, okay, I'm done. I'm done. Uh, well, and you things. found examples in science where that goes yeah. on. Yeah. That's why I wrote this book is because it, you know, my research trying to get myself out of these dark spaces in life. Yeah. I mean, I've had some really dark spaces in my life, you know, and, um, you know, trying to get through them, uh, you know, I, I got lucky enough. Wow. You hear that? Somebody's racing. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I've been lucky enough, lucky enough, definitely to get through them enough to to learn these lessons. And I was learning lessons like this when it wasn't popular. So I tried to tell people, you know, oh, man, this is so it's so much easier this way, you know, or whatever. And they just, you know, whatever. But it it just. Nobody wants to hear anybody preach or teach. So that's why I wrote the book is to incorporate all of that so that maybe one or two people in life could learn that it is actually to adapt and change than it is to fight. Yeah. Well, not, I'm not saying give up your principles. That's a whole nother mom, Matt. Somebody will take that and run with it, but I'm, I'm talking about with our inner dark struggles and stuff. We can, we can be real, hell bent on being mad hmm. but it's a lot easier to adapt and move past it well you've proved that you're an inspiration you're a great author and the book is called fractured the sleeping phoenix book one what is next for you is it book two or is there other stuff on the cards as well i send book two to my copy line editor on the 26th Boxing Day, as we call it here. Uh, the day yeah. after Christmas Day, we call Boxing Day. On the 26th, so that'll be moving pretty quickly as well then. Well, I thought I had half of book three drafted, but then I realized that half of the part, after the half of the 60,000 that I've actually drafted, half of it is 
book four. So <laughs> oh, there's more than three. I thought there was only going to be three. Oh yeah. No, there's probably going to be about six or seven. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So this is going to be quite the thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's, well, I want to make, I want to, I just want to leave this legacy of, of fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, before I can't type anymore. Oh, so, I see. So, that, so this is a progressive thing, this condition. Right. It, okay. I, the funny thing is, is uh, you know, with with diet and attitude, attitude is mostly it. Yeah. Um. I was, you know, I was very sick for a long time uh, with a bad attitude, and eating well. Right. Yeah. So you know, it didn't it didn't do me any good to eat well if you have a bad attitude. Right. So I I realized over time, you know what, this bad attitude. And I'll never forget one time I was sitting, it was, it was, I was probably a month out from being out of here. And I remember sitting in a recliner and looking at my legs and watching the de deterioration. And I remember looking at my body, you know, my legs and just thinking about my body. And I was like, you know what? I am so freaking sorry that I judged and was so hard on you, hating you. Because I hated my body. You know, I hated everything about, you know, every, everything about me because it wasn't what everybody thought it would be, you know? And I remember, and I'm gonna tear up thinking about it because it was such a profound experience that I just remembered saying, I am so, so sorry. And I felt this, wave of energy and tingling come through my body that I will never forget. And that was the turn where I realized it is attitude and where you put yourself in, in the quantum basically, um, as to where you go. And, uh, the whole attitude thing changed and, and I still ate well and, things started getting better. So I went from, I was went from like maybe a month away from being gone to here I am just because I changed my attitude. Wow. Wow. And so do you get the feeling that your, your body forgave you for, for being angry at it? Yeah, I kind of do. I mean, it was just like, it was already, you know, it's kind of weird. It's it's going to sound like crazy. It's not like I have this conversation, you know, both. Well, kind of do have a conversation both ways with my body because it is every piece of your body is a frequency. It is, it has intelligence. Energy carries intelligence. And it was just like when I started acknowledging it and acknowledging the attitude and acknowledging how hard my body tried so hard to compensate for what I was putting into it as far as my, my attitude and my adjustments and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, I just, when I started being grateful for it and apologizing and starting treating it like another, like I would treat another person, then everything changed. Wow. Everything wow. changed. You are such an inspiration, Ishkia, and I can't wait to work on the other books, but right now the one you need to get is download Fractured, the Sleeping Phoenix book one. Get it on an e-book if you like it that way. Uh, obviously, I would prefer you to get the audio book because that's the one I had a little bit to do with. Ishkia had everything to do with the whole, all the rest of them. In the link below in the blurb, if you're watching this on YouTube, there's the link that will take you to the Audible page where you can get a 30-day trial of Audible, which means you can download the book for free. Um, so that's uh, it's all in the in the thing in the in the blurb there underneath. So check it out, Ishkia. It's been wonderful talking to you. And uh, thank you for being so open and sharing so much and for helping me get to know you better because I only know you, knew you through the work and through our conversations, which were usually about the work, although 
now and again we did drift off and talk about other things as well <laughs> but you know but uh oh it's just it's just been so cool and thank you very much for choosing me to to narrate the book the book is called fractured the sleeping phoenix book one and it is by ishkia page and it's been an honor thank you how about that was that good Did you enjoy that I didn't go, yeah, we didn't go fine. too deep, you don't think? I'm pretty open. It's all in the book anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I was going to be private, I don't know. I just think that, you know, if if we learn something or if we have a hard time with something, it's worth sharing because then it's worth nothing if you don't. So, yeah. Yeah. What, and what everybody, everybody has those obstacles and everybody will feel like giving yeah. up and, and you know, if we can just help them over that next obstacle because you have to attack them one at a time. Um, it could really, it could really help a lot of people out, even though our basic job here is to sell books. But uh, right. yeah, if we do some other stuff as well along the way, that's nice too. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, great to finally meet you and see you. Is that, is that the nerve center of your operation where you are now? Is that where the it books is. are written? Yeah, yeah. Now oh, it all looks. It all looks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just my whole world of words. <laughs> and do you have to discipline yourself and do like so a certain number of words a day? You know, when I first started, uh, I had I really struggled. I mean, I am a really t honestly, when I first started last year. It was horrible. It was horrible. It was, t I can't tell you how bad it was. And the first time I had a beta read, I was, it was just like, I looked back, I looked back on it like a month ago and I was like, oh my gosh, that is so embarrassing. It was really bad. I wasn't even being hard on myself. It was just like, did you even learn English? <laughs> you know, I couldn't have been that bad. <laughs> oh, you have no, I, it was just, I had, I had, I started out with 11 beta readers and, um, th all of them dropped out, but three and it, it was bad. It was bad. And I had a couple of author friends in that group. They wouldn't read it. They didn't finish it. They stopped one third way through and said, I can't read any more of this. It was that bad. It was really bad. I was so embarrassed. But you and did know what? You, did you nail the problem and fix it? Or did you just keep trying again and again and again and again and, and it evolved? Yep. That's where it ha that's what happened. Again and again and again and again. I stopped counting at 22 edits. Wow. Wow. I stopped, I stopped counting then. And then uh, maybe about, oh, man, eight or nine through... I sent it to a, a really cheap, bad developmental editor and they got one, the way one third, the way through and said, I can't do this. And so, but she was cruel about it. She was really cruel about it. And so I almost quit then. I almost quit then. I was like, you know what? I have no business being an author. It's just, I'm, I'm a storyteller but I'm not an author. And, um, but I kept at it. I was like, well, this is the only way I'll leave a legacy. This is the only way I will give what I learned as a benefit to somebody else. Cause I don't want to preach it, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. And, um, so I just kept going and I found another cheap <laughs> developmental editor. Developmental editors are extremely hard to find. And, most of the time when you hire them, they're like five, 6,000 USD Ooh. Ooh. To, for an 80,000 word book. It's just crazy. Um, but um, so I did that. I did that the cheap editor and she was off the wall. She scan reads. So she'd miss my information. But I almost quit then. And then finally, it was just like, I'm looking at her ludicrous comments that have nothing to do you remember the um, you remember the the part in the in the TikTok room? 
Yeah, remind me. The dying dimension. In the yeah. dying dimension. The yeah, yeah. Where the, the fireplace and all that kind of stuff yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, what? I lost it. It was There was a point to it. Oh, I can't remember now. It'll come back when we go and you can send me a, a, a okay. nice voicemail. <laughs> So I can't remember what I was, what, what was I talking about? You were talking about how this development editor was really nasty. It was really cruel, oh, yeah. harsh. Yes. Okay. Now I'm back on track. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Well, remember where I, uh, um, right before that is, was talking to the stars. Yeah. Yeah. That whole, that whole thing was done in Rom's point of view. Right. And she's unconscious. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Both of them so, were, weren't they? The the um, um, Zreus's brother was too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I'm like, because she said something wacky. It was just like this needs to be done in another point of view. This doesn't need to be done in Rom's point of view. And I got to thinking, well, I'll just do it from an unconscious person's point of view and make it a lot more richer and see the dark ones start coming in and all that kind of stuff. I was just like, people are going to think this is absolutely kooky, but it made sense to me because it would tie in more information without mm -hmm. having to say it. And, uh, so I started looking at my book in a way when I was having so much trouble with it in a way that, would incorporate the dimensions that it does really truly incorporate, but yet never really say it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so that's when things started turning around is when I would write what I felt was happening. It was kind of, it's kind of weird. It's kind of hard to explain, but, but that was the key. Doing, that was the key that anything could be done. I am not limited. Like everybody else has said all my life. So when I started reading this, writing this and I got that key, it was like, now nothing can stop me. I can write any way I want to get the point across. And people, I don't know how many people said, this is the wackiest book I've ever read in my life. <clears throat> you thought this shit up? <laughs> it's like, and then my sister says, you know, you got one fucked up mind, dude. <laughs> 